Music Interviews brought to you by Music Matters with Daryl Craig Harris and Music Tribes Unite. Hondo S. Carpenter, how are you doing, my friend? You know, Daryl, I got to tell you, I love being with you. You're a great friend. You're just not a guy. It's a fellow media member. You're a dear friend. I love you and your gorgeous wife. And it's always great to get to spend time with you, whether in, per in person or like this. Likewise. Yeah, we had fun. We, we've been to dinner. We, we've hung out a little bit. Um, it's exciting. I, I, I love what you do. Um, you're kind of like a man. You kind of have 10 jobs for like me, but <laughs> on a bigger level. Um, you've been with Sports Illustrated for how many years now? S several with the Sports Illustrated Maven Group. I, I don't even remember. And then before that, I was with the CBS and 247, uh, very shortly with 247, but with CBS. Um, I was a, um, a television anchor with ABC for quite a while. So been in this a long time. And, wow. Uh, yeah, very yeah. busy radio. Had my own radio show uh, for over 20 years that went over a couple of states, uh, multiple states. And then here now doing radio, I mean, doing radio in Las Vegas as well as everything else, TV appearances, whatever I need to do to get the, me the message out of the sports media. Yeah, and that's amazing. And I, what you do with the Raiders is awesome. You're also hosting um, Raiders Nation Radio, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, I do host Raider Nation Radio and, and the morning tailgate. Love doing that with my partner, Clay Baker. And and just literally, you know, in today's world of journalism, I was speaking to a group of young journalists in school a couple of weeks ago. And at the end of get talking to them, they did a question and answer period. I guess that, that means we're getting old, Daryl, when young kids are asking us. I think and I'm actually old. I think I'm actually older than you are. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, I maybe by a couple of years. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, we're peers and contemporaries at least. And there you go. Yeah. And I was telling them if you think that sports writing now or media now is getting behind a, a typewriter or a keyboard, I guess I'm showing my age a lot now, but uh, you're wrong. And you got to be able to do a lot. You have to be able to embrace social media. Um, you have to be able to embrace um, doing television, doing radio, writing. All of it is all encompassing. You know, I was at a press conference today, the day we're filming this and with Josh McDaniels, the new head coach of the Raiders and right. Dave Ziegler, the new general manager and Mark Davis, the owner. And I did all of it on my phone. Right. I know I it's, mean, it's, it's a whole new world, right? <laughs> it, it's, it's unbelievable. I remember now this is how old I am. I remember that when I went to a press conference, I had to have a producer, a guy that operated a boom mic, a camera guy, me. And then it was, then we got smaller cameras. They said, well, we're just going to send you with a camera guy. And right. then it's, Oh, by the way, the camera fits in your hand. So you were sending you alone. And uh, if you don't yeah. adapt, you got the mic in one hand and the camera in the other. <laughs> I did that. And now right. I just hold up my little phone. I, I, I know. Little, I'm old. I got the big, old, the big little phone, but still, and, and, and it's just, it's evolved and, and it's changing. I've been all over the world um, and, and it's changing everywhere, even in countries that um, maybe aren't as developed as America. We're right. seeing what we saw in the riots in the Middle East you know, video getting out off of people's phones. It's stuff leaking now, even in countries that are closed. You know, I think right. sometimes we forget how fortunate we are to live in the free world where we still have freedom of press. And now even, even oppressive regimes are being stopped because are being set in their tracks. They're, 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 and they're getting set in their, in their uh, tracks because people have that phone and they sneak that video out. So right. uh, it's yep. changed the world. I think it's done a lot of bad. I think social media has done a lot of bad. <clears throat> Listen, I, when you go through Facebook and all of my pages, I got over a quarter of a million followers. And I can tell you that if you don't, if you do what I do, you better have thick skin. Right. Uh, yeah. I'll get, I don't, I don't even, even, even what I do too. I, I get the same thing on the podcast stuff. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I'll give you an example, and I don't want to monopolize your podcast. It's your podcast, but oh, you're fine. Go ahead. I want to give you an example. So, I Derek Carr, the quarterback of the Las Vegas Raiders, uh, finished fifth in passing yards um, in the National Football League. So, I asked the new coach today about having a top five quarterback, 
And literally, I got death threats sent to me. Wow. And I had to pass those over to law enforcement. And, you know, it's just the way it is. You get a lot of people, you're stupid, you're dumb. Well, okay, I, I can deal with that. That's no big deal. But it's amazing how much courage people have because when they'll see me in person, it's can I take a picture or get an autograph? Right. Yeah. It's, you know, and it's funny because it's easy to hide behind the phone, hide behind a keypad, right? <laughs> now, I got to tell you that keyboard courage, man. Yeah. You know, exactly. When you and I were kids, <laughs> it was liquor that gave people courage. Now right. it's an anonymous keyboard. Yeah, I know. It's it's funny. And and like you said, then you meet them in person, like, oh, I'm, I'm your biggest fan. I'm like, really? <laughs> okay. That's yeah, funny. How, how did you, um, so going back, how did you get started in, I know you said you were, you told me that you were a jock and all that. How did you get started in broadcasting with the, an interest in that? Well, you know, uh, obviously I, I'm a communicator. I enjoy communication. And I was approached and said, hey, would you be interested in getting into sports journalism? You got a lot of relationships. You got a lot of people that you know. Um, you're already a communicator. I was doing TV in another field at the time. And I said, sure, I would absolutely enjoy it. And it just kept growing from there. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I go back to talking to these young journalists the other day. Uh, and I explained to them, everybody thinks journalism is telling a story. And that's true. But it's far from what being a journalist is. It's about relationships. Right. It's, it's yep. un understanding you know, nowadays, everybody runs to get the story quickest. For example, earlier the, the week that we're, uh, earlier last week, excuse me, uh, Tom Brady, people were running around, Tom Brady's retiring. It's over. Tom Brady's done. Well, all of a sudden, Tom Brady's people are like, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> I haven't said anything about that. It right. may happen, but I don't even know. And Tom Brady came out and said today that, um, you know, some, this is an age where everyone wants to be first. But here's the problem with that. If you want to be first, I want to be accurate. Right. So I don't care if somebody beats me. Um, a couple of weeks ago, um, I wrote about Josh McDaniels being a legitimate candidate for the Las Vegas Raiders job and got panned for it. Yep. And a lot of people mm -hmm. tell me, you know, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. It's going to be Jim Harbaugh, Michigan. And well, guess who, you know, it was hired today, Josh McDaniels. And so yeah. it's about relationship. I'll tell you a great story. Years ago, I saw a well-known football player and he was walking down the road and stumbling pretty good, but he was walking and I stopped and I knew him. I covered him. I asked him, how you doing? Are you all right? He said, yeah, I just had a little bit too much to drink. So I'm, I'm walking home. So I gave him a ride home. The next day he was pretty sober and he called me about six or seven o'clock at night. And he said, uh, Hey, I noticed you didn't report about me being drunk and i said well what's the story right yeah and, and luckily that the report is that he was walking and doing the smart thing right <laughs> so i didn't even report it to me it right, wasn't a right. story and sure and you know there are times when people will tell you things in confidence you know i laugh because my twitter dms um blow up with everyone wanting me to give them the you know the inside scoop and right. i had just today alone I had 200 DMs ah, and, crazy. And, okay, and, and listen, I may follow you, but it, I go watch my coverage. And again, right, but social yeah. media at, at no time in the world history, have we been closer and at no time in world history, have we been farther away? Yeah, it, it definitely is a double-edged sword. Like it's great to be able, like you said, being first, what happens is you have a lot of people that are trying to be first, but then they're inaccurate and they don't retract or correct the story. You know, once they find out what that what they reported wasn't exactly right. That that's the that's the really tough part about that whole thing. I think. Well, I, I'm proud of something. In all of my decades of doing this, I've never once had to retract a story. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I'm well proud you know what? It. If you, yeah, and if you're careful and you pay attention and and you do the work. You can avoid almost all of that, right? It's just a lot of, mm -hmm. like you said, it's that, it's that battle to get the headline out. It seems like I'll, that's I'll always, tell you, you know. a funny story. There was a president of a corporation once who called me and said, I'm going to give you a breaking story and told me the time that I could break it. And I said, fine. And but here's my rule with um, uh, anonymous sources is that if it comes out, you're lying. I'm going to identify you as the anonymous source. Fair and enough, it also has, 
It also has to be somebody, though, that I, I built rapport and I know they're trustworthy. Right. So the president of this corp, let's just say them that I, they told me I could break it at noon. So they about an hour and a half later, they call an emergency uh, press conference. So everybody goes to this press conference. And of course, somebody asked this president of the corporation, you know, Hondo Carpenter reported this. And, and is this true? And they all laughed. They thought I was completely wet. And the person got up there and they were so mad. And I can't believe this stuff gets out. I hadn't even told our board of directors yet. I can't. And, now, and this is the person that gave me the leak. Yeah, yeah you're sitting there, you're sitting there like, uh-huh. <laughs> how funny yeah it's just funny how people are like that it's like you know but they like the they like the leak but they don't want to take the responsibility <laughs> well this president so used it to to beat up the board of directors you people talk too much and i think it's ridiculous and so what this person did is made them leave their cell phones at the receptionist desk it was all a setup uh, funny. it was so funny that's so funny what what's some of the um i know you've you've known many many sports luminaries who are some of the people that are been have been your favorites over the years that you've interviewed well first of all i uh Irvin magic johnson uh, i right. love irv and for those of us that have known him a long time it's Irvin. it's not magic i love Irvin. i love his heart i love cookie his wife his family precious people um, one of the things that I love is, you know, here is Irvin and, you know, approaching, getting close to being billionaire status. Right. And yep. He doesn't run around with bodyguards. It's still him. Um, you know, he knows he's world famous. He knows that he's going to get stopped for autographs and pictures. And what's he do? He still goes to basketball games and sits in the crowd with everybody else. And um, he's a genuine, warm person. Uh, Shaq. Love the love Shaq Diesel. Shaq yeah, he's out there. He's out there having fun. But that's, yeah. that's, that's great. I think I was asked once after a basketball game in Detroit, what's, I mean, they, they, they person said to me, is Shaq not smart? Cause he's joking. And I looked at him and said, Shaq is one of the smartest people you would ever meet. The issue is, is that he's the one having fun and, and, and y'all are the hamster in the wheel. Right. And, 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 <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, if you go to hockey, it's it's going to be Gordie Howe. Many people believe is the greatest hockey player of all time. Steve Eiserman's another one. Um, if you go to football, man, I don't know who I haven't interviewed. Um, I, 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 football players are just a unique type of people. Barry Sanders comes to mind. He's one of the greatest running backs um, of all time. Tom Brady is such yep. a great guy. He's a great person. Uh, he's a great guy. That's not going to make me real popular in Las Vegas because Raider fans hate the Patriots. But, you know, yeah. Tom Brady's but, a great guy. I'll, I'll give you another there's, one. A, there's a lot. There's a lot of love for Tom Brady because he. I think he always comes off as being a straight ahead guy, which yeah, you know, it's it's it, that's a tough business. Football, it's a lot. It's a whole lot of different personalities, and you know, we we all know the stories of many of them. But I'll give you another, like a, a younger one, Draymond Green who plays for the Golden State Warriors. This is a guy I believe is a future Hall of Fame player. I've known him so long, and he's such a special person. He's passionate. He loves life. He loves his family. Um, he is a guy that, I, I man, I don't have enough good to say about Draymond Green. People, you know, they, they don't like him if he's not on your team. Right. But if he is on your <laughs> exactly. team, you, know, you love him. In baseball, um, I'll tell you a guy that, that I always enjoyed interviewing was Derek Jeter. Uh, Derek's a, a great guy, tremendous guy. Um, I always liked him. I, I thought he was fun. I thought he was interesting. Uh, Roger Clemens. I know he's a guy right now going through a lot of controversy, but uh, Roger Clemens, a great guy. So for me, I've met so many. I've interviewed so many politicians. I've interviewed so many uh, people of so many different uh, walks of life. I once interviewed a, a World War II uh, infantry soldier, and it was interesting. Here is this older man, and he was very quiet, very soft-spoken, and we're two or three minutes into the interview, and you know what this is like, Daryl, when you're like, oh, dear God, I don't know. How, how's, this, get, how's this going to go? <laughs> I don't even think I can get anything out of this. Right, so right, exactly. I asked him, I said, what do you remember most about being in World War II? 
And he stopped and he began to cry. Mm -hmm. And he said, the smell of gunpowder. Yeah. And, and two hours later, we had finished. I didn't even realize my cameraman had run out of battery about 20 minutes into the interview. Wow. But my, here's the cool part. My cameraman didn't even realize it. Hmm. And the guy mesmerized. It was the most, one of the most incredible interviews I've ever done. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, the interview thing, like you said, you never quite know what you're walking into. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you, you think it's going to go a certain way. And then I, I always tell people like, you know, I have my bullet points that I want to hit with the interview thing, but I think the biggest thing is listening, not just asking the questions, listening to the answers, because they may take you a place that you can't possibly imagine. That's even better than anything you could have ever asked, right? Well, I think you and I were out to dinner with our wives a couple <clears throat> weeks ago, and, and I think that was one of the things about that night I enjoyed was just literally listening to your wife. I mean, what an amazing woman, the work she's done with special needs kids, and then her yeah. work in the entertainment industry. I mean, you... You are like me, Daryl. You and I think you and I are such good friends because we both married way out of our league. But, you know, that, hearing, is, the, that is the key to success. <laughs> it is. But you and I both, I think, you know, it was fun listening to our wives. I loved listening to your stories. So many things going on in your career. I'm just so proud to be your buddy. I mean, I'm just this little nobody and you're the big star. And I, <laughs> well, I like hanging out. That's with not exactly true. <laughs> well, I, that's what I think. Well, I, I, you know, it's, it's awesome about you is that you're, I mean, I know, I know your whole full story, but I, I think what's great about you is you're always positive. You're always trying to impart, impart positive energy to people. And that's so important because we need that, that that's, that's sort of missing these days in our society. I, I, someone asked me one day, how would you describe what you do for a living? And obviously my job is to tell the truth, but I, I would like to be known as a hope dealer. And I'm a guy that doesn't look at life as a glass half full. Hmm. Uh, I have a buddy who wanted kids his whole life. We've been friends for years and years and years. And his seven-year-old son, he was so excited when his seven-year-old son was born and so excited about his life. And he buried his son at seven. Uh, uh. And, and I'm sorry, that, that to me would be the, one of the worst tragedies in the world. Uh. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it, it, my mom is in her eighties and, and recently we almost lost her. And, and you know what, I, as sad as that day will be for me, I'll be able to look at, you know, I, my mom had 80 plus years on this planet. I had 50 with her if yep. she would have died recently. And, and, you know, that's sad, but it's not a tragedy. A seven year old yeah. was. And yeah, I, I, I honestly, I don't know. I have friends that have had that happen and I don't know how they survive it. I don't know if I can honestly. I agree with you. And, I remember sitting with him. I called him a couple of years after his son died. And I said, come on, we're going on a hunting trip. And you know, I'm, I'm a hunter. I love to hunt. Oh, yes, we know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, <laughs> you've been to my office, you know. Yes, I have. <laughs> so uh, we, I take him on this hunting trip. And it had been a couple of years. And, and I just thought he'd like some time to get away. And we, we get on this hunting trip. And we're sitting on the edge of a mountain. And we were eating uh, a snack and I put my arm around him and said, how are you doing? And tears begin to fall from his eyes. And I thought, Oh, here we go. And he looked at me and he said, I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. I said, why are you happy? He said, I always wanted a son and I got one for seven years. Yeah. He said, can you believe those people who they're, they, they can't have kids? <laughs> He goes, can you imagine the torture they live through not having kids? And when I, I, I look at it, when you think of it that way, yeah, that's a glass half full guy. That's powerful. Yeah. And he said, you know, my son died with no pain. And he goes, we were, we were blessed that way. And, and I, I know that this isn't a, a, you know, a preaching broadcast, but I'm just yeah. re 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 relaying to you what he said to me. <laughs> Hey, it's real life. That's, and he that's goes, life. I'm a Christian and my, my son is, and I'm going to get to see him again. And he goes, I'm yep. not going to be depressed the rest of my life. I mean, I'm the, to me, that's the approach I take with life. Right. I, I take the approach of, I'm going to look at everything as a glass half full. I'm going to believe in a person until they give me enough evidence not to. I, I'm yep. going to believe in people. I like people. 
Uh, I enjoy people. Maybe not always the social media trolls, but you know what I love about social media? Do you know what? You- but those guys are teachers. They teach you, they teach you tolerance. They teach you how to deal with anger. <laughs> you know, I don't block them. I don't block them yeah, because right. there used to be a group of people who literally had a social media club that said those blocked by Hondo Carpenter. And there was like a thousand people. In it. <laughs> yeah. So I've now got, I, I've got, I probably have a similar list. <laughs> yeah, so now I mute them. Yeah. And so I mute them. So now they, cause when you mute somebody, they can't tell that you block that you're not right. watching them. Right. That actually pisses them off more. But <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna say this to you. This is one of the reasons why I like you. And and you're a tremendous musician. I mean, you're you're incredibly skilled. You have more talent in one finger, I think, than I have in my whole body. And 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 I, I love to listen to you play. I love your talent. And you know this. Um, thank you. Well, it's true. And and I remember once sitting at a Billy Joel concert. And watching him play piano, I had tremendously good seats. I was there with somebody very well known and watching him. And one thing that stood out with me about Billy Joel is sweats pouring off his brow playing the piano and he's smiling. He loved it. And I love people who love what they do. I love Mm -hmm. people who don't go through life miserable. And I I sometimes say, okay, when, when someone clicks on a story I write, it may be a loss. And you know, you got to tell the truth. This team lost. What, what, what's the bright side? Uh, Rich Passaccia, the former head coach of the Raiders, him and John Gruden both gave me great compliments when talking about they love my questions because I would I like to say to coaches after a loss, you know, when you're down on the field, you can't see the whole field. And, and think about this, mm-hmm. whether it's soccer, because I know you have a big audience in Europe and overseas, Right. Whether, it's so- whether it's soccer or as what you people call football <laughs> or, or what we call the real football. We love football. Uh, uh, American, you're right. You know, you, you get a better view when you watch the film afterwards because it's shot from a higher level. Sure, and I like to ask coaches, yeah. after watching the film, did somebody's performance stick out that was better than maybe you thought from field level? Mm-hmm. And again, I think that's looking – for positive questions it's and, and you know it doesn't mean you don't ask tough ones because i do i ask some really really tough ones because that's my job and i have to right but yeah. uh, but I'll, I'll give you one other quick one if you don't mind no, i don't know if we're up sure. against the break i apologize no we're fine you I'm, I'm a lot better to have on television and radio because i understand hard breaks but not in a podcast <sighs> I know. But, yeah, that actually, but that's actually the advantage of a podcast because you can go a little deeper, which, which I know. Is, is awesome. I was listening to a Joe Rogan one the other day, and four hours later, I'm like, oh my gosh, four hours because I was driving. I don't and, know how people do four hours. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> I, he does that all the time. He does like three hours. I'm like, dude, that's a lot. <laughs> now, I don't know how they do it, but they do. Yeah. I need a meal, but um, it's a, a pee break. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Something. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching these things and, and, you can, you know, for example, if a player has a bad game, you can walk up to the player and say, man, you really suck today. And that was terrible. And man, you embarrassed your family and the fans hate you. What are you going to do to get better? Okay. Of course, they're never going to want to talk to you again. <laughs> well, the point is there's a lot of media who want to interject themselves into the story. Exactly. And then, or you can go up to a player and guess what? I mean, I cover wealthy professional athletes. They know when they didn't play well. And you look at a guy and say, man, you didn't have your best game today. Why? I have never once had a player say I asked an unfair question or, you know, or, or, or to to get angry at me for the tone and ask the question only one time. And it went viral and your, and your, uh, your fans can actually Google it and watch the video. I asked Mark D'Antonio, if he had made a mistake not firing coaches the year before because he had a terrible season, and he said it was a dumbass question, and it went viral. <laughs> but, hey, we're, we're allowed to dumbass questions every once in a while. <laughs> but the point was it wasn't a dumbass right, I know, I know, I know. I had well, told you, him you, earlier in the year, all right, if this doesn't work, I'm going to put you on the spot for hey, it. So Hey, fair enough. Well, you know the thing about the, the interviewing thing, too, like you mentioned, when you're interviewing somebody, I think one of the big rules is don't make it about you. It's not about you. It's about the guests. I'm trying to learn about who you are. I, you know, and even though we may be friends, I still want to educate the public who's watching our interview, who you are, who your background is, and as a full person, not just as a media person or just as a, a star or whatever, right? That, that's a super thing, important thing to remember. 
Yeah, I think it's important. You know, I'll, I'll give you a great example if you don't mind. In my world, I know these guys. I know their wives. I know their children. I know their family. In some cases, uh, I even know their parents. Yep. And and so I know them as people. I I don't know them any other way. And then, at, but fans see all oh, this professional athlete. I see his commercials, all of that kind of stuff. And they see him just as they're not human. Now, I'm going to tell you a great story. I, a very, very famous football player, very famous. I mean, I think it's going to end up in the hall of fame. That's how good he is. One day I'm walking through a stadium and I see his daughter and we're friends and she gives me a hug. Hi, Mr. Carpenter. I said, hi, how are you? And we're talking. And when I asked her how she was, she started crying. And she said to me, why do people say my dad is stupid and retarded? And mm. why, why, and, and, you know, some, first of all, we should, why, why would you call anybody retarded? That's just so dumb. Exactly. And, yeah. But the thing that hit me is sometimes fans don't realize these people are human too. They have children and they're under a lot of pressure. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. Uh, let me say something. If you want to be critical of a professional athlete, have at it. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. But when you forget their people too, and, and that, you know, watch what you say. And again, I have no problem. You know, if someone, I, I had a lot of people today after that comment about Derek Carr, you're an idiot. You know, you're dumb. I can handle that. <laughs> yeah. That's but part of the what? territory, right? But when you, you know, when you don't realize their families watch, their mm -hmm. families care. You know, one of the things I love about you and your bride, and I won't use her name just because as public figures, we don't use our wives' names. But uh, I love about your bride is she's your biggest fan. And, you know, here you are, you travel the world doing what you do and you're so good. And, and she said to my wife uh, how proud she was to be your wife. And I, my, I thought that was cool. And, and I think that's why our wives hit it off and, and became, I, I think, becoming fast friends. And you, you and I already are is, you know, you, you, when you forget that people have families and it's about people. I, I made a rule in my life years ago that my life, I, I never wanted to forget it's about people and exactly. people, people matter, people count. And tonight I'm going to go and I'll, get in bed in my beautiful big home and listen to the waterfall that goes in my backyard into my pool. And I'll lay there. And somewhere in, in the city where I live is a guy that's living in a culvert. And he's a guy I've seen before. I've even talked to him once. Yeah. We just talked about that. Yeah. Just recently you and I did. And, yep. and but guess what? I'm no better than him because I'm on television or radio or because I'm known as a journalist or anything else I do in my life. I'm no better. And, and, and he matters and he matters and you know, to me. And the thing is, we all have a story and now everybody's story is valid. That's something, you know, that I think we have in common. I think we both feel that way. Like, you know, you may, you see people walking down the street and everybody has their issues. They have their stuff going on, but you know, everybody's valid. Everybody's story is valid. They have their life to lead. We have ours, but someday, you know, we're going to see that this is school. We're here to be educated. <laughs> we're learning yeah. our lessons. We're going to make mistakes, but that's often, when I've made mistakes is when I've learned the most, right? In our, in our lives. Absolutely. You know, I have a motto that, you know, uh, about, I'm not a perfect person and I want to hang around with imperfect people because when you find somebody that gives off an air of perfection, you just know they're fake. Well, and, and oftentimes it, they're insecure and that's where that yep. comes from. You know, the people that are at peace in the world and, you know, you can not to be, you know, religious, be whatever, but people that are at peace with themselves and, and see people as, you know, spiritual beings, which we all are, then you kind of, they, you can see that they have a peace within them and they're willing to help people and, and they don't focus on themselves. I totally agree with you 110%. And yeah. so to me, it's about people. So to me, <clears throat> uh, when I cover a sporting event, um, I, I'm a little bit different. I think maybe that's why I've had some success. Um, I asked a player one time after throwing an interception, you came off the field smiling and laughing. And talk to me about that moment. I like to ask specific questions and, and I'll watch facial reactions and, or body reactions. I've said to a player once, 
man, you guys were down two touchdowns and you were on the sideline being the biggest cheerleader. And it was a game that they came back and won. Tell me about that moment. Um, yep. I love that. I, to me, anybody can pick up their phone now and find out who won the game and, and, and how many yards there was in offense and defense. My job is to tell you, I get the position other people don't. I have the front row seat. I'm in the locker room. I'm on the field. I'm on, you know, next to the ice, whatever, whatever sport I'm covering. So my job is to not tell you what you can readily get. My job is to take you places you can't go. Yeah, you get to dig deeper, flesh out the story, what's behind yeah. the story. I think that's so important. That's something we were just talking about with the boxing thing that, I, that I've been working with. I'm like, you know, you get the stats and everybody wants to know the stats. I said, but it's a, there's actually a much bigger story. I want to know why this guy wakes up every morning at 5 a.m. and goes and runs a couple of miles and trains all day long. Like, what's mm -hmm. the story? What, you know, what's the motivation? And it's not just about winning because it's, it's way more than that. It's their family. They're, maybe they're supporting their whole family. There's always a big story there. And it's, 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 I think to me, that's the more interesting story than just the numbers. I agree with you hundred percent. Yeah. What's, what's some advice you would give to young people that want to get into sports journalism or journalism in general? What's, what's some things you've learned along the way that are really important points? Number one, don't ever walk into a story with a preconceived notion. Hmm. Um, for example, I've been around the game of football for decades, for five decades. and I can tell you, um, it, I always have an idea who I think is going to win, but I never know. I know a lot of um, media people who yeah, start writing their story sometimes the night before because mm. they want to be the first one to have a story out. Well, if I already know how the storyline is going to go, I'm going to look super stupid. So well, I don't go into any story with a preconceived notion or a preconceived opinion. I may have things I'm watching for. So for example, I'll give you an example. I'm going to be at the Super Bowl in a couple of weeks. And uh, Matthew Stafford, I know really well, the quarterback um, of the, the Los Angeles Rams, Brian Allen, the center, a dear friend of mine. Uh, you know, my wife and I were with him and in, in, in on, on a personal side earlier this summer. Great friend, great guy. On the other side, Trey Waynes, the defensive back for the Cincinnati Bengals. Man, I know Trey right. really well. Fellow awesome. hunter, great guy. Okay, so I'm going to go into those games rooting for those three guys to do well. I know them. I like them. I respect them. I think the Rams are going to win this, the game. But I've seen so many upsets in my life that I'm going to go in there and watch it. I'm going to go in there and, and pay attention to it and let this, let the game evolve and tell its own story. Uh, if, yep. I'm, I'm not going to get political, but I want to address something. I can't stand today's modern politics. And here's what I mean. If you're a person that's a Republican, you go to Fox news. If you're a Democrat, you go to MSNBC or CNN Yep. Well, I don't want either side telling me what I think. I'm not stupid. I want to know what's said. So if there's a president in office that I don't like, I still listen to his press conferences. I listen to his speeches. If there's one I like, I still listen to his press conference and I still listen to his speeches. Uh, again, I'm not going political, but just stay with me for a moment. I, I, I got you. I think you'll see my point. It amazes me how many people on the right get angry when a left president like President Biden or President Obama spend a lot of money. And but yet when Donald Trump did it, they weren't angry. Or how many on the left got angry with Trump? And then if somebody on the left did it, they didn't get angry. You know, we have created a society of tribalism where there isn't right or wrong anymore. Now, I'll yeah. just say this because it's not political. I'm tired of deficit spending from both parties. I don't think either party, I'm not a Republican or Democrat. Neither one is serving us. They've forgotten they work for the American people and the American people have forgotten that. Yeah. And so uh, I, to me, I, I don't like self-serving. If something's wrong for Daryl, then it better be wrong for me if I'm going to judge you for it. Right. And, and, again, if you, and if you care about people and care about, you, know, you have, you have children, you care yeah. about their futures. And, and that's, and that's, you know, that's not a political thing. That's a human thing. 
Exactly. <laughs> it, it, it's a hundred percent correct. And, and, and so I think it's fair to say for a young person, I, there are three pieces of advice. Number one, let the story come to you. Number two, don't ever apologize for being human. Uh, I'll give you a great story. So several years ago, there was a family that I don't remember now if they were adopting a child who had been with them as a foster child or if they had already adopted them and they had been a foster child, but it was right there and they murdered the child. Mm. They murdered him. And I'm sitting on the desk at the TV station and they're talking about, you know, these people are going to be, you know, justice. They're going to go to jail. And I was angry. And later on the next day or a day and a half later, maybe I was doing a local radio show and somebody, uh, you know, said something to me and, and I brought up that case. And I said, it's not justice if they get to live. Yeah. And I said, I'm sorry. I can't sit there on the news and act like, well, justice was served because the, the lady said, well, I have a mental disorder and I, and I, I can't. I can't be blamed for what I did. Well, but you didn't when you adopted the child just a few months before and they had to do mm -hmm. a complete background on you. Right. Again, yeah. to me, right is right and wrong is wrong. Whether it's somebody I love did it or somebody I didn't love that did it, whether it's somebody I support or don't support. I don't like situational ethics. Um, I don't like today's society where, you know, we just don't call a spade a spade. And you know what? Well, why people, the goalposts keep, goalposts keeps changing. Yes. <laughs> and I, I don't like it. The rule, right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so frustrating. I agree with you. And I think, again, I think that's just another area why you and I are such good friends. Yeah. And like I said, you know, the thing is, um, and yeah, because I don't do politics really in this situation. We all have our own feelings about things. Right. But I think, you know, it's a human thing. And there's, there's a middle for the, there's a reason why there's a middle. <laughs> Yep. And, and, and not only in politics, but in life. And I think the thing is, it's all about respect. And when it comes to journalism, it's also about respect. Like you said, people have families, people, these guys are under a lot of pressure on these pro sports teams to go back to that. So, you know, be respectful. You can, and as a journalist, you can do that and still get the story I and, agree. Tell, and be, and be honest. I think that's, and I fact. told you I had three points. So my, my, my the first one is done net, you know, don't preconceive the story. Number two, don't forget you're human. But here's the third, and it's the biggest one, is remember it's all about people. I'm able to pick up the phone and call some very, very, very famous people who won't return other people's calls. And the reason is, is because over the years, I've built relationships, and I'm trustworthy. They it's say, hey, I integrity, right? Yep. And, and it, it integrity. You, and, and so when you remember that it's about people, I'm going to give you a great one. So several years ago, there was a story that I was aware of that would have got a lot of clicks, a lot of, I'm, I, I would have guessed probably 25 to 30 million clicks. So that's a national big story. Yeah. But it was a big story because it was sensationalism. It really wasn't a big story in my opinion, in what I do. Right. It probably it would about, have been a big story. Yeah, yeah it, it, it probably would have been a big story, maybe to TMZ or to National Enquirer, but it wasn't about, it would not have been a big story in the world that I operate. So I went to this person and said, listen, I've got this video of you sent to me and I bought it. Mm. And I said, I would not have bought it, except I don't think it's fair for me to report. And I said, I know your personal life. I know what you're going through. He had a child that was very ill and dying. Oh, wow. his, wife, his wife couldn't handle it. And it wasn't my friend. It was another guy. All so right. they were going through a divorce. And, and I gave him the videotape. And I said, I want you to promise me you're going to get some help. And if you do, I'll never run this. Mm. Now, let me just say a very famous person. Right. I gave him the videotape. 
And he actually went and got help. And I'm glad to say, thanks to my opinion, to the goodness of God, him and his wife, um, she ended the divorce. They're, they're still together and still happily married now. And to this day, if I need somebody in just about any world, sports, finance, uh, Hollywood, and I can't get them on my own, I'll pick up the phone and he's like, I'd love to help you. And yeah. he's opened doors for me by telling people, this guy is completely trustworthy. And you can hey, trust you know what? Him. That's, that's all we have in this life is, is our word and our integrity. And once you lose that, there's no place to go, especially with, with, with what we do. Um, and you do it at a much bigger level than, than me. But with what, we, with what we do, integrity is the thing. And if, if people don't trust you, and, and if, you, if you violate that, a word gets around really quickly. Yep. <laughs> so and you, you know. you, you're absolutely right and you know I'll, I'll give you something that I, one of the things that i enjoy about my friendship with you and of course all of your fans know this i'm, I'm preaching to the choir here but i i love I, I look at people in a lot of different ways when i cover an athlete doesn't matter to me if he's a good husband or a good dad for my story but i still watch that because i root for good people yeah, you want them to be good people, right? <laughs> yeah. Years ago, my dad told me something I'll never forget. Is he said, son, root for good people. And I have people all the time that ask me, who are you rooting for in this game? And who are you rooting for in that game? And for me, it's very hard because almost every game, I have friends that are tied to the game, either as players, coaches, members of executives, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, so I always tell people, I root for good people. Yeah, That's what matters to me. I root for good people. I want people to experience and I want good people to succeed. You know, one of the things I laugh about, and, and I talk about this quite a bit, is people who watch others succeed and get jealous. When I watch other people succeed, I rejoice. I get oh, I, happy. Yep. And I, I've, I've said that in, in the music world, it's very competitive. And I, I've often said, especially on social media, I'm like, I'm happy if everybody's working. And I, I see people and not as competition. I see them as colleagues. And once you go down that road in that, in that manner, I think you're actually a much healthier person. <laughs> and I agree. You, and, you, and you just, you kind of unburden yourself from the jealousy and from all that stuff. Well, the way I look at it is if others can prosper and succeed, then there's hope for a big dummy like me. Exactly. <laughs> there's hope for all of us. <laughs> uh, how can, uh, Honda, how can people find you online? I know you're at Twitter. You have a lot of social media. How, how can they find you? You can go to Twitter, and it's at Hondo Carpenter, H-O-N-D-O-C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R. -E -E you can go on Facebook to Sports Illustrated's Las Vegas Raiders coverage, Spartan Nation, Spartan Nation TV, Go Green, Go White. <laughs> We're literally all over the place. And, and uh, again, with, with roughly a quarter of a million people, we really, really appreciate our followers. Yeah. I was told by one of my followers today that I'm probably the most interactive national media guy. I enjoy talking to people on Twitter. I like people, yeah. you know, if, if you're going to use, you know, foul language to me or trash people, I just, I do mute you. I'm a very um, prolific muter, but I don't, I don't mute people for disagreeing <laughs> with me. I don't care. I yeah. say all the time, you disagree with me. I don't care. I'm not yeah. going to get hey, you know what. You can, you can learn, like I said, you learn tolerance. You can learn all sorts of things from that. <laughs> well, listen, I won't say it because I don't want to give away your wife's identity. I want to protect your security. We both know how important that is. But man, I was learning with your wife, showing me pictures and talking about what her new career is. And then oh, yeah. pick, picking her brain about her time working with, 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 with children of special needs. And, yeah. and I mean, I love listening to you. You're so talented with your instruments. I, you're, you're, in my opinion, and quite frankly, I've always said that I thought Gene Simmons was the best bassist. And I know <laughs> people say I'm not, I'm an idiot for saying that. I've actually told that to Gene. Hey, he's my neighbor, actually. <laughs> oh, but uh, I, I, I know people call me an idiot. I've actually told that to Gene years ago. But uh, I just like it because I like his music. I'm sure there yeah. are more better. But uh, until I met you, and you're the best bass player I've ever heard, I enjoy it. I, I uh, love to hang I, out with you and your beautiful bride. And and, I, and more importantly, thing, Daryl, I, I, I appreciate our friendship and I appreciate you so much. Well, likewise. And I'll tell you, there's always somebody better. I learned that many years ago. 
<laughs> just just when you think you're hot hot poop, some little fifteen year old kid will come along and smoke you. So, oh. <laughs> but that's okay. That's Isn't how, that that's the how, truth? That's how it. That's how it should be. That's how life is, right? <laughs> I saw a meme the other day. Now this will tell you how old I am. Two years ago, I thought it was memes. And my son at the time was fourteen. He's like, "Oh, dad, dad, please don't talk." Okay, get you into the I, <laughs> yeah. So I saw a meme that said, "Hey." Quit trashing your parents. They graduated without Google. <laughs> exactly, which was no easy feat, let me tell you. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining me. I know you're super busy. We, our schedules are kind of nuts, but both of them are. And I, I would say one thing that you always say is dream bigger, which I think is is something that everybody should do. I think that's great advice, right? Well, it is. And life's not meant to just be laying in, 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 in a world where you go to work, pay bills, and, and you don't dream. You don't exactly. enjoy life. Yep. And, and my philosophy is that God, God's desire for our lives is us to dream bigger, to have a better life. And, mm -hmm. and so wherever I would encourage, and, and you have such a wide audience around the world, I would encourage people wherever they're at to dream bigger. Absolutely. Dream bigger. Yep. Don't just be happy with what, where you're at. Want more. If you have a great marriage, I have a great marriage. I am married to the love of my life. She is the sweetest woman in the whole world. She's God's gift to me. And we have a great marriage. And we talked about this coming into 2022. We have a great marriage, but we don't want to just settle for that. We want it to be amazing marriage. You know, I have a great job. I'm, 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 I'm so blessed to work with Sports Illustrated and the amazing people at Sports Illustrated and, and with all of that network. I'm fortunate to get to cover the Raiders. You know, I have so many, and but I, I want to dream bigger. I'm so blessed. I have so many great friends and of which you're one of them. And, and how many people have great friends like you, Daryl? And, and I'm blessed, but I, I, I want to dream bigger. And so I would encourage all your listeners, dream bigger wherever you are in the world dream bigger and in wherever your situation is maybe you're the the guy who's just got out of the culvert dream bigger and if you can get anything from me it's this if a big dummy like me can dream bigger <laughs> then you can because i guarantee 99.9 .9 of your audience is better looking smarter and probably farther down the road than i am so i encourage all them and and I can already tell you're smart because you listen to Daryl, who's one of the best in the business. I'm proud to call him my buddy, and he is great at what he does. Well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. But I, and I totally agree. Everybody is capable of much more than they know. They just have to free themselves of the chains that they've built around them and just keep rising. Keep and, tell, and I would say this, wherever you are in the world, you can tell them, hey, there's this amazing podcast called Music Matters with Daryl. And, and, and I heard a hope dealer on there and this <laughs> hope dealer said, you can do it. Now, let me just share this with you. Wherever you are in the world, when your mom and dad conceived you, there were millions of millions of sperm present. So at some time in your life, you've already beaten a hundred million to one odds. That's exactly right. And yep. so whatever the odds are against you today, your hope dealer is get ready now because I'm dropping dime bags here. Your hope <laughs> dealer wants you to know you've already beat a million to one odds once. You can do it again. Dream That's exactly, exactly right. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for joining me. And uh, I super appreciate it. We're going to put all your links on the podcast and I'll send you links when we get all set up. But uh, have an awesome night and I'll, I'll be seeing you soon. <laughs> all right, buddy. God bless you, friend. Awesome. Thank you so much. It matters with Daryl Craig Harris. Thanks for joining us and catch you next time.